Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see explore input and output binding types in Azure function. So let me just quickly log on to the portal and take it from there. I'm logging on to the Azure portal. And let me see if I activated my sandbox subscription. Okay, Microsoft Learn Sandbox. Okay, so accessing and processing data is our key task in many software solutions. So let's consider these scenarios. Let's say you are a software uh, solution engineer and you've been asked to implement a way to move incoming data from Azure Blob Storage to Azure Cosmos DB. Now you want to post incoming messages to a queue for processing by another component in your enterprise. Your service needs to grab gamer scores from a queue and update on the online scoreboard. So we will use a solution known as binding. What exactly is binding now, right? So in Azure Functions, binding provides a declarative way to connect to data from within your code. They make it easier to integrate with data streams consistently in a function. We can have multiple bindings providing access to different data elements. This is powerful because we can connect to the data sources without having to code specific connection logic like database connections and web API interfaces. There are type of binders, input binding, output binding. Input binding connects to a data source from which the function can read data from these inputs and output binding which connects to a data destination wherein function can write data to these destinations, right? So there are some supported binding types which are blob storage, Azure service bus queues, Azure Cosmos TB, Azure event hubs, external files, external tables, HTTP endpoints. All right, so we will create the binding. I'm going to use the PowerShell language. But before that, I will create a function app again. So I will create a resource. You already know it. And function app create. It's already there. Assert function app. I'll go with the code node.js. Leave default and the region would be central US. I'm going to go with this default options. Review create and hit create. I'm going to pause the video and come back. All right, I have the function app created. Now I will create a function. I will go here. And I will click on add function when it's complete. I will click on add to add a function. In the template, I will select HTTP trigger, which would be this. I'll click on add. And in the template details, I can in the new function text box, I can change the name of if I want new function, it would be so in the new function in the top menu bar, select get function URL. This is the default function URL host key. So if you would default function a URL. 
I will copy it and keep it with me. And I will show you if I paste it here, what do I get? And I get this HTTP trigger function executed successfully. And and if I add this query string at the end of this URL, like this i am sorry i misspelled it we azure hello azure this http ticket function executed successfully Okay, now as you can see from this exercise so far, we have to select a trigger type when you create a function. Every function has a single trigger. In this example, we are using an HTTP trigger, which means that our function starts when it receives an HTTP request. The default implementation shown in the following, I will paste a PowerShell code here. It would use the push output binding commandlet to respond with the value of the parameter name it received in the query string or body of the request. If no string was provided, the function responds with a message that prompts whomsoever is calling to supply a name value. Let me get the code. Now, if you will see this bindings file, it's in a JSON format. You can see the function has a trigger binding name, a request of type. HTTP trigger. All right. And an output binding named response to of type HTTP. Direction is out. And we saw uh, how we added the trigger and then we were able to get the request. Right. And if you want to explore the binding types, if you would uh, click on this integration, please note that we have already defined a trigger and an output binding. Like in the image you see, right? This is a trigger and this is the output binding. We can see that we can't add more than one trigger. In fact, to change the trigger of our function, we would have to first delete the trigger and create a new one. However, the inputs and outputs section of this pen this pane display a plus sign to add mode binding. So we can accept more than one input value and emit more than one. So this, this, if you will click on add input, you can add the type of binding here. And if I cancel it, you can add the output binding as well. Okay. Now, if you want to create an input, let's say, Here, Azure Blob Storage, Input Pop, In Container Name, Azure Web Job Storage. You can click on OK. See, it's showing you the message of updating the binding here. OK, and if you want to cancel this binding, you can delete this binding and click on OK. And as you can see, there are several output binding types. We will get back to adding output bindings in later videos, but for now, let's cancel this. So far, we have learned how to create a function app, add a function to it. We have seen a simple function in action and one that runs when an HTTP request is made to it. We have also explored the Azure portal and types of input and output bindings that are available to our functions. In the next video, we will use an input binding to read text from the databases. So I hope this was informative to all of you guys. If you have any queries, please mention them in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day.